Welcome to module 611 of the GPS MOOC. Uh, this is the last technical module and the, uh, of the last week, and then the only thing left after this one is one more of the GPS in our lives short interludes. So what we're going to do in this video is summarize everything that we've been looking at through this week, uh, all the different constellations and the information we've learned about all these different GNSS constellations and tabularize this information so you have one place to go to look up specific details of any of these. And so we're going to look at the systems from the different countries and we call this the GNSS Zoo just for fun and because it's a zoo, we uh, put some animals associated with each of the different constellations. So th the first thing we'll look at is orbits, because we've just looked at that in some detail over the last few videos. And what you'll see here is just a summary of everything you've seen over the last uh, few videos, such as what is the altitude, what is the orbital period, what's the apparent repeat period, and by that, remember, we mean the repeat period of when the satellite will be in the same place in the sky as viewed by a stationary observer on the Earth. And so we, we, we looked at that in some detail, and so we'll just sum, we'll summarize them all here and then bring up something new which we haven't looked at so far, which is given that each of these constellations repeats in, for example, one day for GPS, eight sidereal days for GLONASS, seven sidereal days for the Beidou, Beidou Mios, one sidereal day for the Beidou Geosynchronous, 10 days for the Galileos. This question arises, how long before the entire constellation of all these different satellites, that's GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, and Galileo, how long before that entire constellation repeats itself as viewed by a stationary observer on the Earth? Well, the answer to that question is we have to work out the lowest common multiple of 1, 8, 7, and 10, and that's 280 sidereal days. So that's quite profound because people who've worked in GPS for several years have got used to the idea that if something happened at a certain time in a day, it's particular, the kind of thing that happens is, is that you get a certain kind of multipath in an urban canyon, such as we just looked at in the previous video. You saw pictures of what that looks like. You have the buildings and you have signals that can be reflected. If that happens to you one day, one sidereal day later, so like practically speaking four minutes earlier, at the same time the next day, you could go there and expect to get a repeat of that phenomenon. And so with GPS, that worked. If you're working with a receiver that's tracking all of these satellites and some kind of constellation configuration happens, you're going to have to wait 280 days before that happens again. <laughs> So roughly speaking, we get these kind of repeats down here. The GPS orbits repeat themselves every day from the point of view of a stationary observer on Earth. GPS plus Beidou would repeat about every week. GPS plus Beidou plus Galileo, the constellation of all three, would repeat about every two months. And, and the uh, constellation of the, all the different systems would repeat only about once a year. So that's an interesting detail that we hadn't really looked at before. Okay, so the next thing we've organized in the zoo is the signal component. So we've looked at uh, how we uh, have the different carriers on L1, and we just talked about that in the previous video and several videos before that. And, and so uh, I don't mean to go through all the details of this table. It's just provided for you for your reference at your leisure. I'll just point out some highlights of the structure of the table. Uh, firstly, the, the red, as you've probably noticed, is where the other constellations differ from GPS, and the white is where they match GPS. So it just gives you, a, once you understand GPS, you've got a simple guide to look to the right and see what's different. And then you'll notice here that Galileo has two columns because Galileo has a pilot signal and a data signal. We looked at that when we spoke about Galileo. And so it's got two columns, and you'll notice down the bottom that the data bit rate is four milliseconds for the data, and then there's nothing uh, for the pilot, because that's the point of a pilot, a pilot signal. There is no data on it. However, there are these secondary codes on some of the new systems, and you'll see them mentioned in each of these. Beidou has a secondary code. Galileo has a secondary code. GLONASS has something called Manchester encoding, um, which we won't go into detail, but it behaves like a secondary code. And then 
we've talked about the box signals that's mentioned here, and you'll see them show up for Galileo. And what we're showing here are the, are the existing signals. We're not looking at GPS-3 here and into the future. These are existing signals. So you remember we talked about how GPS-3 itself will have box encoding. This is just the existing signals. The future for GPS itself, so I call this the LI section of the zoo for L1, L2, L5. And so the icons, of course, are the lemurs. And so L1CA is what we've got now. And you'll remember that we talked about L1C is going to come on GPS-3. When that comes, L2C is already available on GPS Block 2F satellites. And L5 is also available on GPS 2Fs. And L2C is also available on the 2RM satellites. And so that's shown for you down here. What was the first satellite to send this signal? So L1CA has been available forever since Block 1. And now all the satellites that are up there, 30 or if it's 31, that changes uh, with time, uh, of the satellites carry L1CA and all the future ones will as well. So there are no G so GPS-3 will be the first satellite to carry L1C. There are none of those at the moment. Block 2RM and Block 2F both carry the, L the L2C signal. So that's why there's 13 of those. And then Block 2F carries the L5, and there's six of those up so far. So that describes which satellites carry these things. And then the actual details of them are as shown. And I, I won't go into detail because we don't have time, but that's there for you to look at at your leisure. So that's it for the tables. And uh, it seems an appropriate time to talk about, well, well which phones have all of these different uh, systems in them? And so I've categorized it. As follows, I've said uh, we'll we'll look at Android operating systems, phones based on smartphones based on the Android operating system, and smartphones based on iOS. And the reason I've categorized it like that is that this is what the market for cell phones looks like this year. Uh, of all smartphones, 80% of them uh, use the Android operating system. 14% use iOS. So those are the Apple phones, the iPhones. And then Windows phones, Blackberries, and any others make up just a few percent. So that's why, uh, to give you a, a, pic, a kind of big picture of what constellations are supported by which phones, I've just focused on Android phones and iOS phones. And so what you'll notice is that all of these phones that are being produced in 2014 support GPS and GLONASS, which is interesting. So the era of GPS-only receivers in smartphones has already passed. We're already in a GNSS era. Uh, some of the new Android phones coming out in 2014 uh, support QZSS and Beidou, and none of them support Galileo and IRNS at the moment. Uh, so the, and then, as you see down the bottom for iPhones, uh, the, all of them being sold in 2014 support GPS GLONASS and QZSS, and none of them support Beidou, Galileo, or IRNSS yet. So this information is true as of now, September 2014, when we made this video.